I don't have to listen to your shit. Man, snap out of it. Man, don't kill the hostages. I might have my issues, but I know what you did. I've seen the pain you've caused, you fucking traitor. Hello traitors, and welcome to another episode of The Game Asylum. Today we are looking at the Kane and Lynch duology. Yes, that is a word. Now, my original plans were to take a look at each game and give it an individual episode and their time to shine and all that crap. But fuck it, here's my big blowout review of the Kane and Lynch series. Let's do this. If there was a game that gave me blue balls like a Navi and Blue Man group orgy, it would be Kane and Lynch Dead Men. When this game first came out, I really liked it. I loved the tone, I loved the characters, and the multiplayer mode took more hours off me than I care to mention. And I was really excited to replay this game and show you how great the game actually was. But, sadly, it doesn't hold up on a consecutive playthrough. And before you shut off this video, stay with me because it does get better. I think it would be appropriate to highlight what I did like about this game before we talk about the darker side of this moon, uh, for lack of a better term. Yeah, let's get on with it. If there's one thing I absolutely love about this game is the destructive environments. I love how the scenery just gets ripped apart by gunfire. It feels like an action movie. Well, one in particular, Heat, with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. From watching the trailer, you can see the inspiration behind Kane and Lynch, and how the combat tries to copy the same style. And you can see a John Woo influence too, sadly there's no doves in this game. Another thing that gets me horny is the ragdoll physics. It seems that games are moon away from using such things, like the Havoc engine, but man I love it when I see an enemy cartwheel through the air after a grenade or a shotgun blast. And paired with the destructive environment it just adds another movie like quality to the action. Some of the levels are really good. The bank heist and the club are great examples and have some really cool atmosphere. The rest of the levels, however, just feel kind of pointless and bland. The Havana section in particular feels like it's been ripped out of another game and slapped into this one just to pad out the time. And as for the titular characters, I love Lynch. He's the best character in this game and his psychotic outbursts were funny. And in my opinion, he's one of the best sidekicks in gaming history. It was fun to see what he would do next. But, and there's a big butt with bells on, the problem is if you play in single player, you control Kane. And, well, <laughs> you get fucked over a picket fence on this one. Kane as a character is poorly explained, poorly fleshed out, and I couldn't give a shit about him. And yes, I know Kane and Lynch are supposed to be assholes, but Kane is the most generic and boring asshole I've ever had to play. Well, until some idiot invents a game where you play as Piers Morgan, but I digress. And to tie a bow on this, Kane is on the same level as Kratos. He's riddled with generic angst, and we as a player are not given any context to give a shit about him. Alright, at least Kane at the end of this game doesn't use the power of hope to defeat evil, but I ain't teabagging that bee's nest again. The story to Kane Lynch Dead Men is quite simple. Kane was part of the Seven, this criminal organisation, and for some reason he managed to fuck him over. I don't know, it's so poorly explained, but anyway, he gets fucked over, you fuck them over, and everyone gets fucked by the end. But Kane Lynch Dead Men just jumps from one area to another with no connecting tissue in between. It gave me the impression of a story that was unfinished and most of the plot was cut to make a deadline. And it sucks because there is some really cool stuff going on here and I love the little interplay between Kane and Lynch. They're constantly giving each other shit. But the actual story between level to level is disorientating. It feels like you've been pushed into a van and when the new level loads up, they pull the bag off your head, they give you a slap across the back of the head and off you go. As I mentioned the combat earlier and what I did like, well, there's one major flaw this game has and it makes it a massive letdown for me is that the guns and the gunplay, it's fucking awful. Throughout the majority of Dead Men, your default weapon is a P90 submachine gun, and I couldn't get rid of that fucking thing quicker. 
Yeah, it was okay for close range encounters, but for the rest of the time, the accuracy is way off, and it just doesn't feel satisfying to use. But with the pistols, you can snipe an enemy from across the map without any issue. Yeah, because that makes sense. Another misfire when it comes to the combat is Kane and Lynch tries to do a tactical squad based thing like Rainbow Six or Ghost Recon, where you can give orders to your crew to take cover and such, but half the time it barely works and the other time they just stand there. I do like the idea if you get down they run over and try and revive you, but that's a roll of dice too. I've had a couple of times where Lynch would just stand there and watch me die. Yeah, thanks Lynch. Teamwork makes the fucking dream work. And this is my last complaint. The ending of this game flat out sucks. To be honest, it's so disappointing. I don't really want to talk about it. Just watch this. I swore I'd kill them all. I swore I'd fix this. I could get her out now. I don't know them shit. They all knew the risks. I'd have to let them burn. Kane. Not in front of her. Kane, what's it gonna be? Fuck it. I can't believe it. Kane! Come in! Can you hear me? Kane, come in! Kane! Kane, don't fucking leave us here to burn in your fucking face! You gonna let them come die? Close. Are yes. you there? I'm gonna let them die. We have to. I fucking knew it. From the first second, I fucking knew it. Quick, buckle up. I said, get your belt on. What? What was I supposed to do? I hate you. You're exactly like you said you are. A fucking traitor. I hate you. Yeah, you see? Well, in fact, Dead Men has two endings and both of them feel unsatisfying. And it's a damn shame. But if there's one saving grace this game had was its multiplayer mode, Fragile Alliance. Where you and a couple of your friends could pull off your own heists. Well, it was more like a horde style mode, where you had to fend off waves of cops from taking you down. But the gimmick this mode had that each player had a duffel bag full of cash and when you got shot you lose some of your money. The whole idea of this mode was to hold out as long as you can before you made your escape, and the person with the most money wins. So it's a standard co-op game affair, but you could fuck over your friends, because another player could turn on you and take your cash. And if you was playing with me, this happened a lot. <laughs> so this brought a huge amount of attention to the game, and if you were playing with random people online, it could turn into who's got the biggest dick simulator. But playing this with a few friends was an absolute blast. But sadly the servers have been shut down for years and it's a shame because I would love to play this game again. So Kane Lynch Dead Men is a mixed bag. I do love the characters and there's a glimpse of brilliance from time to time but mostly it's forgetful and boring. Which is sad because I loved it the first time I played it. But this time it just felt like a chore. And I haven't even mentioned it, but this game was made by IO Interactive, who have made a name for themselves with the Hitman series. And I fucking love the Hitman series. Well, maybe not Absolution, but we'll get there one day. And what really hurts is that this was supposed to be a spiritual successor to another spin-off game that they made, Freedom Fighters. So to not like this game really fucking hurts. Right, now we got that out of the way, it's time to take a look at Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days. Oh my friends, we have made it to the promised land. Kane Lynch 2 Dog Days is set in Shanghai, China, where our favourite psychopath Lynch has set up a new life for himself, until his old friend Kane comes to help in a gun running job. Oh yeah, this won't go tits up by the end of the trip. It does. 
After our devilish duo reunites, Lynch takes a detour to have a quick chat with some other lowlife called Brady, which ends up being a pretty intense chase throughout the neon streets. And I fucking love this. After a heated exchange, Kane accidentally shoots his girlfriend. The problem is this woman in question is the daughter of a high-ranking government official called shang -Xi. Whoops. Now, I'm not an expert in Chinese politics, but I don't think one of the powers that you acquire is the same level as Rita Repulsa. Because somehow the Shanxi has an infinite supply of two bit gangsters, cops, and jarheads to take two middle aged fuckheads down. So, of course, our boys are in yet another pickle, and the only solution is to shoot everyone that looks at them the wrong way. You know, the high ground. Okay, let's get to the point. Kane Lynch 2 is a complete double down in terms of gameplay. Instead of trying to cram all the subgenres of third person shooting into one incoherent mess, Dog Days is a straight cover shooter. Okay, it might not sound as interesting, and the critics at the time panned it for being so derivative. But for me, this might be one of the most intense shooters I have ever played. Here, take a look at this clip. Damn, I'm getting a perch on just watching it. You could say Kane Lynch 2 in the gameplay department is the embodiment of less is more. I absolutely love the art style in Dog Days. Okay, it may annoy some with the home video camera aesthetic, and if you really think about it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why is there a nameless person recording all their illegal activity? Why has he got noodles for arms because he can't hold a fucking camera straight? And when you get eventually shot up, the cameraman dies instead of the character you are controlling. Yeah, I don't get it. But for some reason, I like it. Okay, it's pretentious and it really doesn't add to the gameplay, but it gives this raw, visceral feel that you don't normally get in third person shooters and this found footage style really elevates the gritty tone of the game. It's great. One thing I like to add is that you can turn off the shaky cam while in game, which is a godsend because that's nauseating. But in the cutscenes, yeah, just sit back from your desk a little bit further. Oh, and if you haven't noticed yet, you get to play as Lynch in Dog Days and that is great. Sadly, he's been taking his meds this time, so you don't get the psychotic flip outs like you did in the original. But at least I give a shit about the character I am playing. Okay, he doesn't add anything, he won't make you think or feel, but at least he's charismatic. Back onto the gameplay, while shallow, it's the perfect example of a simple mechanic done really, really well. And Kane Lynch Dog Days is brutally hard. Which is refreshing, because it's not like your average cover-based shooter where you hug a chest-high wall for a nice little sleep. You have to use the cover in this game, because if you don't, you'll get killed quicker and you can say Banzai. Ironically, the gameplay in Dog Days is more like Rainbow Six and Ghost Recon than the first attempt, without the brain-dead team to manage. So to me, this is a 100% improvement. And if you haven't guessed already, the gunfights are so much better. And I think what enhanced it was the impactful and just brilliant sound design. The gunfire alone has a ton of weight and punch to it. Oh, and the guns shoot straight. Okay, the pistol is still has this odd tendency to be more accurate than a long range rifle, but whatever, because most of the fights are close range anyway. And the light machine gun especially is amazing. While the sound design is fantastic and quite deep, the soundtrack itself, the music that is, is kind of bland. But you won't hear it half the time because the gunfire drowns everything out, so whatever. The sounds of gunfire, screaming and such are enough to keep my ears happy. And paired with the visuals, it all ties together into a raw and disorientating world, but done correctly this time. Kane and Lynch are fish out of water. They don't speak the language, they don't know who to trust, so instead they act like rabid dogs and attack everyone with ruthless abandon. 
And with all these elements coming together, this game gives you a sense of what that's like. But I will be honest, there is a few flaws you might want to consider. The main game can be beaten in about 4 hours. To me, this isn't a big deal. I have said this once and I will continue to say it. I'd rather have a couple of really fun hours over being bored out of my bollocking mind for days. And the ending of this game kind of sucks. Now, after a really fun assault on the Shanxi building, where you strafe it with a helicopter and light machine guns, which is really fun, and all the office workers seem to pull out rocket launchers, but let's not read into that, our gruesome twosome finally meet up with Shang Tsi. But instead of normal protocol, Kane and Lynch sit down and have a nice cold glass of beer and apologise for the misunderstanding. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Lynch just shoots him and of course Kane is not very happy about it, but logically, this is where the game should end. Ding dong, the political dignitary who had the power of fucking Skeletor is dead. But no. The game goes on for one more level where you have to shoot your way through an airport to escape China by plane. Alright, it's still a pretty good level, but nah. We killed the final boss in the last level, so what's the point in this one? And who will be our final foe to face before we get out of China? Well, it's a couple of dogs. Yeah, not exactly the best last impression ever. And after you frag those said pooches, you jump on a plane and... What? Wait a minute, let's have a look on the instant replay. Yeah, that's what I thought. What was the point in this? To pad out the game? It would have been better just to end it after they killed the shang -Zi. Leave the game on an ambiguous ending. Did they manage to escape China? Did Kane actually grow a personality? Let me fill in the gaps rather than finish the game on a lame drip of an ending. Oh well, at least Kane Lynch 2 has a fragile alliance mode, which does seem to work on the PC, but sadly I couldn't find a match to test it for this review. Maybe in the future I'll get to wrangle up some players and we can have a go. I will be honest, the Kane Lynch series has left me with the most intense mixed feelings than any other game I have covered so far on the Game Asylum. I will say that I absolutely love Dog Days, and if you never played the series before then probably just play that game. With its amazing gunfights and style, it will keep any action fan happy. While Dead Men is harder to recommend, but I would say give it a try, as there is some great moments. Just go in with very low expectations. I just like the idea of playing a bad guy in games, and developers should embrace being a giant twat sandwich more as it's fun and cathartic, but Kenny Lynch is an acquired taste. And I would like to say thank you for watching this, feel free to subscribe if you haven't, and click on the bell to be notified when I have a new patient in the game asylum. Tune in next time for some Residential Evil in Feudal Japan. And I really need to play Freedom Fighters again. <laughs> Let me see your eyes.